Hello friends and in this video I'll be speaking about a peculiar situation that we as surgeons at the beginning of our career do face. So uh, you are just out of your residency or fellowship training and you have started your private practice and uh, you get a complication or a situation arises after the surgery where the patient requires another intervention to take care of that sequelae or complication and how to deal with that. Uh, I have seen that many beginners get trapped in such situation and uh, uh, they find it very difficult to come out of it. Now uh, let's find out what are the things that come into the surgeon's mind when a patient comes back after uh, for the follow-up say and you find that uh, there is something which needs interventions for say uh, the for example in cataract surgery say the IOL is not in the proper place or uh, it's uh, damaged or may need replacement or there is a refractive surprise or uh, there might be a posterior capsular rent and there might be a vitreous which is still there in the antechamber or something similar to these situations and now you start thinking you get trapped in that thinking process that uh, if I tell this patient that he or she needs another intervention what will that patient think about me how will they react how the relatives of the patient react to such situation and uh, we get afraid about it and we try not to you know inform the patient about this and may try to manage it somehow without any intervention uh, surgical intervention and we may try to uh, manage it medically though the logic will tell you that uh, if we deal with it surgically it is better and patient will be back to recovery very quickly also you are in the beginning of your career so if this patient is told about another intervention and then patient goes to say your competitor or another practitioner in the locality the you may get uh, you know bad mouthing from him and your reputation will go down your practice will be affected and you are in the beginning of your career so there are a lot of stress uh, financial as well as your emotional stress is there to make the practice successful so when you get trapped in all these things what happens is that the patients may suffer and you will also suffer so first uh, let's begin with what is the exact doctor and patient relationship now uh, in ophthalmology we deliver perfect results in most of our cases but uh, definitely still there are cases which may not have the favorable outcomes when we deliver good outcomes we uh, or even the patients think of a doctor as someone they have paid for for getting the perfect result so that is the mind frame that not just patients but also the doctors or treating surgeons get into that i am paid or i am appointed to deliver the perfect result but that is not the situation when we are tackling a particular disease or disorder and the patient selects you appoints you to treat that basically we are forming a team or we are partnering with the patient to deal with that situation so we are a team here with the patient and when the patient trusts you patient puts faith in you and appoints you as the doctor for taking care of this particular situation it is understood that the patient also accepts the shortcomings the limitations and the risk involved in going ahead with that procedure so whatever happens later it's not just the surgeon's responsibility but it is team responsibility so this first thing in uh, practice what you should do 
is that never try to hide something from the patient because he is in your team so it is not the patient against the doctor it is the patient and doctor together against a particular disease or disorder of course the team is stronger when the outcomes are favorable when the outcomes are not favorable you may feel or the one of the team members your patient starts feeling that whether they have not chosen the right doctor or something like that okay and uh, you are not honest with the patient then you get into a trap where you cannot give a good advice to your patient of course as doctors we are 100% responsible and we are going to try 100% to take care of our patients but because medical science is still not exact things will happen beyond our control so no complication or sequelae is a intentional incidence it is just out of the natural course of certain diseases and it's part of possibility that we may have during the course of treatment so once you have this clear thought process in mind do not get bothered about what patient is going to say about this or react to this situation we have to be uh, very truthful and we have to in- explain this situation to the patient as a matter of fact now once you are very honest with your patient it doesn't matter if patient wants to take a second opinion i would encourage that and wants to go to another surgeon to get treated or for opinion believe me if you are not truthful you are not honest and you are not told the patient that this particular thing has happened when patient goes to another surgeon and the surgeon tells that this is the thing which has to be tackled then patient is really unhappy but if you have already told what has happened and what is the way out then patient is not unhappy he might be angry a bit initially but uh, he knows that you have been honest with him because nothing angers a patient more than a dishonest doctor so be truthful and try to help your patient in all possible ways and that is the best policy in such situations if you try to hide this right from the first instance when patient w- walks back into your cabin for a checkup and you find something is not right and you try to hide it you get into a trap that you hide that so next time you are trying to hide something else and uh, now you cannot reveal the truth to the patient afterwards because you are already committed to something so don't get into the trap just be honest be very frank with the patient and of course it is not just you who is bothered by the situation it is the patient who is going to have trouble because of this so remember he is also under lot of stress so the patient also requires lot of mental support emotional support so do provide it to them the situation is such that the next intervention cannot be done by you you are not specialized in that don't be afraid to refer the patient to your colleague who is good in that take a personal care speak with the patient all throughout this intervention because your ultimate purpose why you are you have been appointed by the patient is to take care of the disease and it may take longer than what is expected but ultimately you will find that the patient gets better so remember these things these are very important things don't get trapped with those lot of thoughts in your mind what will happen to my practice what will patient think how patient will react uh, when patient goes back to society is he going to refer more patients or i am just going to have a bad reputation don't think about all this when you are dealing with that particular patient the first aim is to do the best possible treatment for that patient in that situation 
remember if you are not honest your reputation is going to go down even worse than if you had just a complication and you were honest so my advice to all the beginner surgeons of course it is difficult to deal with patients particularly certain patients who might be aggressive who may not you know accept these facts and uh, will try to argue with you and uh, causes lot of emotional disturbances but whenever there is such situation you have to be truthful and you have to do the best for the patient in that situation of course there are many experienced surgeons here all of us go through such phases we face such incidences and uh, do write about your experiences and of course the young surgeons the beginners in the practice they will be helped by your opinions and suggestions thank you so much